Breakout is a classic Atari arcade game that spawned dozens of copycats over the years. Inspired by the success of games like Pong, Breakout added its own little twist to the ball and paddle arcade sensation, and went on to become one of the highest grossing arcade games of the year when it released in 1976. In this series, we'll look at some of the fundamentals behind making a game like Breakout, and in this first video, we'll tackle setting up our scene and getting our paddle moving. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is click on the Game tab and take a look at your screen resolution. By default, it will usually go to Free Aspect, but I like to use Full HD, that way it'll scale nicely to any other computer monitor that you want to use. All right, with that done, you can head back into your scene view, head over to the hierarchy, and we're going to create a new 2D object, and we're going to make a sprite square. You can use your own custom images, but sprite squares are going to work quite nicely and give us a good retro look. Now I'll click on my rect tool, and I'm just going to create a wall shape over here in the corner. I'll then click on my sprite renderer, go to color, and find a nice looking blue color. I'm also going to quickly rename this one as wall. And we are going to want our walls to detect collisions. So I'm going to click add component, type in box collider 2D. And if we open that up, if you click edit collider, you should notice that it should automatically scale to fit your shape. And that should be all good. With that done, we can duplicate the wall. I like to do this by clicking on it and then hitting command D to duplicate. You can then grab your move tool and just slide it across the other side. And I'm just going to duplicate again and then do some movement and resizing in order to make this um, for our top walls as well. With that done, we've got a nice box for our play area and we're ready to create a character. So I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go to 2D object and create another square sprite. We'll head over to our sprite renderer where we can give this a nice space age yellow look. And we'll just use our rec tool to get the right shape. And then as we did before with our walls, we'll head on over to the inspector and add a box collider 2D. In order to detect any collisions, you don't just need a collider. One of the objects involved in the collision also has to have a rigid body. I'm going to type in rigid body. Don't forget to get the 2D one. And if we open that up, there's just a couple things we're going to want to do in here. And that is we're going to want to head down to constraints. First of all, I want my player just to move sideways, not up and down. So I'm going to freeze the Y axis. But also at the moment, if he were to collide with something, he could be sent spinning. And if we freeze the Z rotation, that'll stop any spinning. I'm just going to use my move tool now to set my player down at the bottom. Click on game to see what this is going to look like. Not bad. However, that blue background is clashing a fair bit. So if I click on my camera, we can change our background color here to a black color. And suddenly, this is looking a little bit more Atari-like. All right, with that done, we are at last ready to get some code happening. So. Let's head down into our project window here. To start off, you'll probably only have a scenes folder, so we're going to create a scripts one. To do that, you just right click, go to create folder, and we'll make a scripts one to hold our scripts. We'll then go inside there. And now let's right click again, create, and we're going to make a C sharp script. I'm going to call this one player movement. All right, and for our player movement script, there's a couple things we're going to want to do to begin with right up at the top here. First of all, we're just going to want to make a public float. Remember, a float is just a decimal number. I'm going to call this one speed. Now, if I were to go back into Unity, click on my square, which I should have named player. And let's add this script on right away. The reason we made that speed um, public is so that the box would show up in Unity. And that means just that later on when we're testing, we'll be able to change this number dynamically in here in order to test and not have to go into our code each time. All right, so we've got our public float for speed. We're also going to be moving using our rigid body. There is two main ways to move in Unity. One is with the transform uh, manipulation, and the other is using rigid body movement. Because we're going to have lots of collisions with the walls and with the ball bouncing back and forth, I prefer to use a rigid body movement for this case. I'm going to make this one a private reference. So we'll go private rigid body 2D, and I'll call this one player RB. Now we could make this a public reference, in which case we could go back into Unity and drag the rigid body into a box in the inspector. But if you do that all the time, it means a lot of boxes to fill and just creates room for error. So instead, we're going to code this script to find the component itself. We'll do this by typing in player RB is equal to, and then we just tell it where to find it. So in this case, we want it to look on our current game object and just find a component that is called rigid body 2D. So we'll type that in, and automatically on start, it will find that component. 
Now at this point, we're ready to actually code in the movement. So we're going to head down to our update method here, and we're going to create a local float variable. Now, the reason this is a local variable is because we're declaring it just within this method rather than up at the top. And the reason we can do that here is because we won't need this data anywhere else in our code. We're only using it within update. So we're going to type in float horizontal input, and it's just going to be equal to input. And then at this point, we have two choices. We can choose either get access or get access raw. Get access raw will give you a number of either negative one, zero, or one, depending on which direction you're pressing. And it results in a jerky but very responsive movement. On the other hand, get access will smooth out the movement, giving you a decimal that is anywhere in the range from negative one to one. And this gives you more smooth movement and acceleration and deceleration. Now that we're keeping track of what button we're pushing, we want to apply that to our player. So we're going to type in player RB, our rigid body and we're going to change our velocity so which is just the direction and speed at which we're moving and we want our velocity to be a vector 2 and a vector 2 is just an xy value and there's a special one in unity called vector 2 dot right which just is going to mean it's moving right so we're going to be moving to the right and we want to multiply this by our speed which is just the variable we created up top but it also needs to know whether it's actually going right or whether it's going negative right, which means to the left. And so we're also going to put times horizontal input. At this point, we can save our code, head back into Unity. Now I already set my player speed to be 5, so we're going to hit play and see how that works. And when I get in Unity, I'm going to use my A and D key to move side to side. It's a little slow, though, so I'm going to come up here and just try a different number. Let's see how 10 feels. It's getting a little better, but still a little slow. And we can always change this again later, but I'm going to try out 15. Nice. That feels pretty good with just a little deceleration at the end. Pretty responsive. I like it. All right. We've now got our board set up. We've got collisions, so we can't go off the screen. And we're able to move side to side. In the next video, we'll start getting the ball bouncing around. Hope you have found this helpful. If you have, I encourage you to like or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.